This is the losers match of Group C of the Dutch StarCraft League Open, um, and in the bottom right position, it is from uh, no team actually. It is the Zerg player Hanfi, and his opponent is going to be a very good friend of mine, at least in terms of as far as friendships inside StarCraft Two go. This is ESC's Jacko, their sponsor being the Icy Box. Yep. Which, you know, when first time I saw the name of the team, or I heard the name of the team, I was like, ESC Icy Box, and I see this big giant bear on the logo, I'm like, <laughs> what do they make? Ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> um, what do <laughs> because they Because I have like this kind of, this association with Russian ice cream, bears, Russia, ice cream, Russia, you know, and I see like, Icy Box, Ice? Ice yeah. cream makes sense, right? Uh -huh. Or maybe my brain is just screwed up like that. <laughs> no, no, that's that's the that's the beauty of human brains, right? They are so associative. So yeah. you immediately link up things that are not necessarily connected. Yeah, true. And I and know this from studying philosophy. Really? <laughs> you, you have psychology in there as well. <laughs> All right. We actually um, we saw a joke unfold. Well, actually, not the joke. But have you heard this uh, this Starcraft related joke? Let's say if you go up to a girl, uh, you can be like, uh, did you do the extractor trick? Because you're 11 out of 10. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we actually just saw Hanfi do this uh, extractor trick thing. So. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's true. Actually, one of the first guys, or uh, if not the first guy that started doing this was Nasty. It was back in 2011. And, um, you know, Nasty was the bomb back then. Um, so everybody started doing this. Everybody started doing extractor tricks. And then, of course, there were some uh, gurus on Team Liquid who calculated whether or not it makes any difference at all. It doesn't. And it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's hey, cool. if you want to be cool. Yeah, just, and, uh, yeah uh, it keeps your hands busy, I guess. Yeah. Um, just be careful if you're, uh, if you're in Bronze League or something like that. Don't forget to cancel the extractor <laughs> after you queue up the Overlord, okay? Because if you don't, you're going to be in, uh, in a lot of trouble. Uh, so we have the uh, Gateway Nexus Cybercore uh, type of opening here from Jacko. And um, looks like this time Hanfi is, uh, has decided to play it safer. And uh, he already has a gas finished, so pool, hatch, gas opening from him. This is way, 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 way safer. And look at the number of links he's already produced. He's going to try and uh, um, make a little bit of... Problem. Oh, yeah, and, uh, but uh, Jacko sees these Zerglings coming with this uh, probe, so. Uh, but can he do a lot of things to prevent. Well, he Zerglings? may lose this low ground pylon, or at mm. least we'll have to cancel it, because the Zod will not be uh, down there in time to prevent that from happening. And the Mothership Core will not be done by that. Uh, luckily, though. Ooh, no cancel. Uh, yeah, no cancel. That's, uh, that's really strange from Jacko. Luckily. Um, we won't have... Yeah, the Zealot needs to block that choke. Oh, oh the Zealot needs to get past! That one little move that he did. I mean, can he block the choke by himself at all? Uh, yeah, y you can, but you have to position uh, your Zealot when you do these kind of chokes with the mm. pylon and a building like this. Very specifically, if you fail to do that, then those links will stream past, just like we saw them do. And this is not a good start for Jacko, considering that there are 12 more links on the way. Uh, drones have been pulled off gas, and no additional drones actually have been uh, have been built. Uh, and this is just mass link production. This okay, but so Jacko decided to to just completely wall off his base to prevent any more zerglings from coming in. I think that's a, th that's a very good decision, but he will lose the low ground nexus. Yep. Yeah, n no stopping that now. Um, of yeah. course, you can send over the Mothership Core, maybe do some damage on the Zerglings, but there's so many of them. Uh, oh, and actually, uh, Jacko is, uh, or um, Anthe is microing them, so as not to lose too many yeah, of them. Yeah, you know, I would... Well, he, he will be able to get the Photon Overcharge in a bit here. Um, Anthe, you know, this is always a... Uh, Ooh, should he, though? I mean, he's gonna lose the Nexus, and now he's wasted the Photon... Oh, well, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is this is a very bad situation for Jacko, and... At this point, yeah, Hanfi is doing uh, the, exactly the, the thing that I oh, uh, wanted that. to point out. He's going back to drones. Yeah, and as soon as the wall, uh, as soon as Jacko managed to open up his wall again, he closed it once again because he thought, well, well, I better not go out. Yeah, 
There's a Stargate uh, on the back of this, though, and, uh, you know, this is the pretty much the only sensible follow-up that I can think of right now, because Hydralisks will be uh, ways away uh, from uh, for Hanfi to get, as he will need to drone up heavily his both of his bases. He won't be getting a third either, He wants because that would, uh, that would put him at risk. Um, mm. So, wh what I expect Jacko to do is just go for gateway void ray and just get two void rays for example and try to try to kill his opponent um well it's gonna be an oracle oh so uh, jacko trying to play the macro game despite what happened i don't know about this i mean we have it's 33 mm. drones versus 26 by the time the nexus finishes the the zerg should be at 50 drones that's, and he's getting a lair, so he's not going to take a third base. Mm, okay, so this is going to be... He's going to try and catch up in the tech department. Um, I'm not sure if that's a bad thing for uh, for Jacko. Because uh, he could have also gotten way more drones and an extra base, which he's also doing, by the way. Yeah, I think... Uh, <clears throat> I think Hanfi is in a good spot here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes the Oracle. Let's see how much damage he can get done. There is only one queen there for defense. No spore crawlers. Uh, so that's one, two, three, and four, five, four, four kills. Four kills. So that's not a whole lot, considering that Jacko has lost seven workers already and a nexus. I can count. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's. Uh... Do they also teach in philosophy classes? Yeah, actually, we we I was taught about infinity in philosophy class. Oh, you know what infinity equals to? A lot. No. Oh. The Zerglings, stream in. So what is infinity equal to? Oh, wait a minute. They, they they don't even get the one sentry, so it looks like Jacko is finally regaining his composure. He's getting the forge as well. Uh, hmm. Gets one void ray, only one. Wonder what that will be used for. Probably hunting overlords. And later on denying creep. Uh, infinity mathematically equals minus one twelfth. Nah, oh, yeah. someone, someone proved that, right? Yeah, I gotta remember that. Yeah, th there is actually a video up on YouTube. Guys, if you want to know a mathematic, if you want to see a mathematical proof that infinity equals minus one twelfth, <laughs> then search it up. Search okay, it course, up. It's, it's mind bending. I'm telling so, what you. this teaches you, of course, is that our intuitions or our system uh, have flaws because, of course, intuitively, this is not possible, right? So. There's either something wrong with the system, or we need to change our intuitions. <laughs> <laughs> Changing our intuitions might be uh, might be a little bit tough. I would change the system. Well, there are people... I mean, changes of intuitions happen a lot, more than you might think. Really? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the Netherlands, we have this big thing now where we are no longer um, like our Cartesian selves, which of course we are not, uh, but we are our brains. There are many uh, popular scientists uh, reporting uh, what they figured out about us not having free will because we are our brains and stuff. And I think many people are listening to this and maybe intuitively switching uh, their their notion of themselves to a more, I don't know, um, unfounded uh, scientistic um, definition. Yeah, I can see that happening. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. you should be a teacher. You can explain. I am actually. You are? Wow, yeah, okay, That's, that makes sense. Because you can explain things in such a way that I can actually understand them. And trust me, with me, that's a difficult thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, it looks like Jacko is trying to catch up very, very, very hard. He's getting a third base, and ooh, this is smart from Hanfi. Look at this, he's getting a Spire down. Um, he does have the Hydra Den as well, so that, that will just keep him safe from any uh, gateway attacks. But since they are not coming... And he did see the third base being uh, being thrown down right now with the Ling. He's going for a Muta Switch. And mm. I, don't, I don't know if Jacko will have the proper response against this. He's continuing to mass Void Rays. Mm. Um, he's got three on the field so far. The Spire is just about 60% down. So it's about a minute before the first Mutalisks will be queued up. Yeah, that's going to be tough. He's going to have, a, or um, uh, Jacko's going to have an Archon, or actually two now. Uh, He's getting Storm, but... Um, yeah. It, Storm will not be ready before the Muta is Well, even if it is, Storm is Close. not that useful, because those those critters are just uh, too damn fast. In the bottom of the map, bam. Um, expansion. Got taken out. Oh, and an expansion, exactly. Yeah. The Hydra's making, them making themselves useful, and there's the Mutalisk spam, 12 Mutalisks. 
<laughs> you know, I, I the only thing I dislike about this is sending those mutas uh, straight away to your opponent's uh, natural base. I would wait for another oh. round. They're gonna get scouted by the phoenixes right away. Or are they? No, they... They, they are. They're just too late on the popping out. Oh. Oh, 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 he didn't see the mutas. He, he did see the spire and he did see the spire researching something. And he switches over into Phoenixes immediately, not adding a second Stargate though, instead getting the Robo, not cancelling that one either. There's a second Stargate, but that's a little bit too late. Massive Ling attack being yep. initiated onto the third base as the Mutas come into the Naturals. Oh, here is the Changeling, see? Oh. They tries to block the entrance, but there's a Zealot in the way. Yep, oh that's pretty... Oh, look at that, he's still trying to do it. That is great. This changing is preventing the Archons from uh, being able to, to move through that choke. This is yeah. great. Look at those units just fiddling around that one. Actually, changing. I don't think that Archon can, can fit through anyways, because there's only one hex of space. Oh, okay. And Archons need two to move mm. about. So Archons are pretty big. Yeah, they're fat. They they're should, like they, they should visit the gym every every once in a while. <laughs> and, uh, here come the Mirosks. Again, combined with the ground forces. Nice storm, Ooh. but storming his own probes in the process. Oh, oh, this is... Hanfi is just playing this so well, this game. Five more mutas and more links coming uh, coming in. He does have more bases in the bottom. Uh, one was cancelled or taken out. Yeah, with, because uh, uh, with Jackal is sending around three Zealots. They, they've already scouted out every single base on that side, and they will probably scout this last one as well. Yep, there they go. Yeah, but the Muta Flog is getting bigger, and you know what? I don't see that many Phoenixes, do you? Uh, nope. I, I don't see even the... see the Fleet Beacon down yet. I don't. There's going to be five Phoenixes in a little bit, but... No Fleet Beacon, you're right. And, uh, That's going to make it to tough upgrade. to engage versus those uh, uh, Mutas that are going to be uh, complemented by Corruptors as well. So, you know, the Corruptors will try to position themselves between the Mutas and the Phoenixes. Oh, that was that was not good getting two hits from the Archon on those Mutalisks. He'll have to wait before he re-engages again. Because mm -hmm. those Mutas, they heal up really fast. Yeah. Not as fast as Reapers, I guess, but still pretty fast. And right now, Jacko needs to identify... I mean, he should know, just judging by the fact how spread out the Zerg is all over the map, that this is just going to be a massive, massive, massive airplay. Second mm -hmm. Spire coming into... Uh, into the play, and uh, Hanfi will be able to start plus Ooh. two upgrades. Nice micro on the Mutas. Yeah. Yeah, but with all the cannons and the Photon overcharge, and of course those uh, Phoenix is there, uh, Hanfi thinks better of it and doesn't attack. Doesn't continue the attack, that is. Yeah, and look at this. Mm -hmm. Hanfi is going to abuse the ledge above uh, the third base in the same manner ah. that we that we saw J ah. um, Shark abuse, uh, abuse it in uh, his game versus him. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, Jack actually saw that coming and tried to build a cannon there. Um, but it was just a bit... Oh, the storm! Storming all the sentries. Wow, that's... Wow. Uh... <laughs> and these zealots in the top left are just being so efficient. They were just standing on, the, standing on the ramp and taking out all the zerglings. Meanwhile, the mutas are back. Oh, this is... I think this is just too many corruptors and too many yeah. mutas. The archons will not fit, Jacko! Damn it! <laughs> Yeah, not with that Zell up there anyway. Nope. Here we go. Will it fit? It's like a, a YouTube series on Archons fitting through relative spaces. <laughs> <laughs> spaces. Alright, so uh, now with the Anion Pulse Crystals finished, those Phoenixes stand a slightly better chance of engaging versus those Mutalisks, but Jekko has to be very, very conscious of uh, what those Phoenixes are doing. You don't want to lose those. Replacing those Phoenixes, well, th th that's actually something that Jekko cannot do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, that's hard, and he's only on three bases, which is what well, it's decent. But if your opponent's on six bases, that's gonna yeah, be a problem. that's uh, that's gonna be a big problem, and that's mainly for the gas for the time being, as we can see that Hanfi is building gas geysers everywhere and wow, not really those... mining the minerals. Whoa, but corruptors corrupting, Templar storming. Whoa, look at the amount of damage on these corruptors. Yeah, but uh, they have a lot of hit points. It's going to take more than a couple of storms to kill those. Definitely, yeah. And we still have 10 Mulesks in the air, plus two upgrades are starting to roll in for the air of the Zerg. Here come the Void Rays, but to no avail. Oh. Weesh. 
I have to wonder if there have been enough Mutalisks lost to give Jekko an edge. Hmm. There we go. These Corruptors are in a bit of small trouble now. They're going to get away as far as they, uh, they're left. How many Mutalisks are left on the field? Let's see. It's um, 16. 16. Yeah. Oh, big attack, by the way, on the, uh, on the third base. Yeah, I'm uh, keeping an eye on that. This is going to be cleaned up, but Jacko has pulled all of his Archons to do that, which leaves those Mutalisks... Okay, there is an Archon in the natural Minorine, so... Uh, you know, he's going to do a lot of damage oh, to those Mutalisks. Is he? Yep. Some Mutalisks die. But as long as those Corruptors are there, Jacko cannot engage those Mutalisks comfortably. And, you know, you, you can kind of see how this uh, this type of engagement or this type of composition, Phoenix, Voidray versus Corruptor Muta, is really taxing on your micro. You really mm -hmm. have to have to uh, stay on your toes uh, the majority of the time. And, you know, it might be, it might just be that the, the scales have shifted a little bit in Jacko's favor. I mean, Hanfi is almost maxed out, but... Uh, Jacko's upgrades are starting to kick in. He's got a good Phoenix uh, contingent here, a mm -hmm. squadron of them defending the uh, natural. And he might go for a base trade at this point, and this does not bode well for the Protoss. Um, no, base trades against Mutas and spreads out Zergs, that's always very hard. These Phoenixes, of course, have one more range than the Corruptors, so if microed perfectly, they could you know, stand their ground, but it's very hard to do. Like you said, it's extremely micro-intensive. You yeah, can't basically do anything else. Yeah, the natural of Jacko has just gone down. Uh, the Phoenixes tried to do their best, but the Corruptor numbers were just too great. And Jacko is trying to go for it. Uh, he needs to split his army a little bit. All, <laughs> oh. Look at the drone train. <laughs> right, and the Archon got off uh, a lot of good hit hits on the Mutalisks, but still too many left. And the Mutalisks are now over the production facilities, taking out any new uh, Phoenixes that are coming out. Yeah, this is... Uh, th this is the uh, crucial time here for Jacko. Once those Stargates get depowered, and those gateways, once those get depowered, it's, uh, it's going, going to be curtains for him. Jacko is having a hard time today. Yeah, he is. I mean, he does have the Mothership Core, so if he, can, if he can take down the natural and the main base very quickly, and then recall back to his main before the Nexus dies, he might be able to defend this and somehow rebuild. But mm. I, don't, I don't know, I don't see that. Uh, 23 probes versus 60 drones. Uh, that's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. Right, I, I wonder what Jacko's plan is. If, if he has a plan, I mean, I, I wouldn't have one. <laughs> but well, uh, I mean, is he gonna recall to his uh, third at some point? I mean, the thing, the thing here is that once Jacko repowers those buildings and starts warping in, oh, never mind. They they were just all taken out with the Zerglings, so he can't even do that. Hmm. Um, because the thing is, if he had more Zealots and his army together, there is no way the Zerg can engage that. You can't kill that army. No. Look how many no. Archons there are there. They are on plus three attack. And with the Phoenixes overhead, you can't approach that army with the Corruptors and the Mutas without uh, taking but, significant but damage. But look at what Hanfi has made as his sixth base. I mean, he's got three basically fully operational bases uh, with quite a lot of static defense at his sixth oh, base. Yeah. Uh, he um, needs to rebuild all of his tech now, though, so this will this will give yeah. Jacko the chance to hunt down these buildings. But the thing is, does he have... Oh, he does build a Nexus in the middle of his base, and he can he can afford uh, he can afford one more extractor. Um, uh, yeah, that's not a lot. That's not a lot, and his probe out on the map dies. Ooh. Does he? So he has no more probes left. So that's it. So these that's are it. the buildings that he's gonna have to work with. This Nexus, this Nexus. If that Nexus goes down, and it does. Ish. Yeah, and yeah. now and all Hanfi has to do is kill off these uh, remaining uh, buildings. Two extractors. And he, will be, uh, he will be revealed soon as well because there's no more nexuses or nexi. Uh, yeah, so Jacko, will be able to see where all these buildings are. Jacko trying to move as quickly as possible, but look at this—he didn't kill these two extractors down here at, uh, the, at the previous third. So even if he plows through all of these uh, spines, which is not likely, then uh, the Zerg will still be able to mine. And yep. eventually... Here we um, go, final push of the Archons. Uh, he's the waiting for the Phoenixes maybe to get there as well. Uh, that is just too much. Oh, oh look at the Muta, they exploded! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that was like squashing bugs. Bam! They like exploded, that was great. Um, okay, so no more Mutas basically, but still... Um, uh, there's no way I think that uh, Jacko is going to be able to come back from this. Now, there's... Uh, 
This is just buying time right now. Uh, but killing those mutas, you know, that was that was actually good. There are only three of them remaining, which means these uh, assimilators in the top and uh, the pylons are quite safe. Unless these zerglings somehow get out. Which, yeah, Hanfi did have the right idea. Um, zerglings have way better mobility. Look at the transfuses on the on the spine crawler though. This is not a battle ladder. Oh, and again an Archon falls. And that's the Grats. 